Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. This is a test of NATV Network. We are now on the air. Love bombing. Love bombing is a manipulative tactic used by individuals who seek control and power in relationships. It involves overwhelming someone with excessive affection, attention, and gifts in order to gain their trust and dependency. At first, it may feel like a fairy tale romance, but beneath the surface lies a dangerous trap. Let's take a closer look at some common signs of love bombing. Sign number one, intense and constant flattery. Love bombers will shower you with compliments, making you feel like the most special person in the world. But be cautious, as this excessive praise may mask their true intentions. Sign number two, rapid progression. Love bombers often push the relationship to move forward at an extremely fast pace. They may speak about future plans and commitment early on, leaving you little time to question their intentions or get to know them better. Sign number three, isolation from others. Love bombers will try to distance you from your friends and family, making themselves the center of your world. This isolation helps them maintain control over you and restrict your support network. The impact of love bombing can be devastating. Victims often become emotionally dependent on their love bomber, making it harder to recognize the abusive behavior. Over time, the excessive affection turns into control, manipulation, and emotional abuse. Fadwa, one of the loyal followers of both of my platforms, says, okay, ready. Uh, and she's not even in the show. <laughs> you guys are so loyal. They are so faithful and loyal. They, they have seen this from, from zero viewers uh, to where it is right now, uh, where I get the honor of being with you, uh, a marvelous person. I'm going to cut to the chase. Uh, even though we touched on the fact that you're from North Carolina, the home of NASCAR. Yes. <laughs> um, which we could talk about that for quite a while. I'm not going to even get into that because uh, I love NASCAR. But um, I do want to say this. You have, you, have, uh, been a, you have been a person who's tackled some fears to get to where you are, leaving North Carolina and being here in California. Uh, you're, you're up in the Bay Area. I'm uh, uh, in the... Um, Southern California, but um, somebody gave you a hat, yeah. San Diego hat. Yeah. Why did they do that? Um. So I wanted to live in San Diego. I wanted to. Well, I wanted to live in California. Period. Uh, ever since I was 19, when I first came out here, um, and saw it for the first time, I fell in love. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get out here. I'm just going to get out here. I felt like that pull, you know, in my gut, in my core, my soul, however you want to phrase it. Um, and I was telling friends for the longest time that I wanted to move out here. And one of my coworkers where I used to work at years ago, um, he was like, now's your chance. Because the company that I was working with at the time, one of our higher ups, had flown from California to Charlotte and said, we're going to need about a hundred employees in Northern California and jokingly said, so if any of you guys want to transfer across country, you know, and people were like, like pick up your whole life and go. But okay. I, I probably, I felt like my eyes got as big as saucers and I looked over, I could feel my friend look, my coworker looking at me. Um, and then after that meeting, he had left uh, his favorite hat on my desk is like a push and it was a San Diego uh, ball cap. Right. And he said, now's your chance. Mm -hmm. you know, like what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is you come to California, you hate it, you come back. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm somebody that um, I can't live with regrets I, or what ifs I should say not regrets, but like what ifs. So, okay. so something in fall, then not do it. Mm, what were some of the biggest fears that you had before well, you came out this way? Yeah, well, I didn't know. Um, okay, well, I had never been in Northern California ever. So when I came, when I visited California for the first time and the second time and the third time and the fourth time, it was all Southern California. So I knew what Southern California was yeah. about somewhat never been in Northern California. So it was interviewing for the job, getting the job and moving cross country and like not knowing hardly anybody um, out here. So it was leaving everything that I knew behind me 
Um, I was born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. I was also, um, and I am, not was, I am in the sober community. I'm sober. Mm -hmm. So I think my uh, support network, if you will. Yes. Uh, that was my biggest fear. And then the other fears were what if, um, I don't know, like what, not knowing anybody and what if I don't fit in? What yeah. if I make new friends? That sort of thing. You know. yeah. Now, now, obviously, you found a way to fit in. <laughs> so, because of that, because you found a way to fit in, I now, I now want to do something with you that I haven't done with anyone, the way I'm about to do this with you. Okay. I have this. I have a basket full of cards. Okay but I have an entire stack of cards that you can't see that I'm putting together right now. And I've already started and about a half of those are questions that I could ask you. Okay. Do not pass out, Melissa. <laughs> I'm only going to work from the basket. I've <laughs> only selected a few and put them in here. So don't pass out and no. think, Oh my Lord, why did I say yes? Okay. So, so, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull out of the basket these cards. They're many different colors, four to be exact, yellow, green, orange, and pink. They're all related to your IG stories and your page. Uh -huh, okay. I'm not going to ask you how far uh, the moon is from the earth, but I will ask you this. You've had to tackle your fears. You've had to tackle many different things that, well, don't make you comfortable to make the move to be where you are right now, let alone to do this show. Because you, 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 you were a little nervous, right, before? Yeah. 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 Okay. So. I always get nervous the first few minutes. Okay. So that's why I've been taking it kind of slow. I've been nice. you got hearts growing across the screen. A few people said hi to you. Yeah. Um, it looks like. Yeah. See? So, so it's it's good so far. Now it's going to go downhill. No, anyhow, what I was going to say is, here we go. I'm going to I'm going to read off a few things off these cards. They're all related to something you personally said. Uh -oh. On, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, your eyes should get big because you don't even remember what you said, but I did because I binge watched all the stuff that you got. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to say to you certain things, and you will be able to respond to what these words or phrases are and what they mean to you. For example, the word nutrition is here on the green card. Nutrition, what does it mean as a health coach? The word nutrition, what does that mean to you? Tell the audience. To me, nutrition, real nutrition, isn't just a quick fix. It's not a crash diet. Food is not a punishment or a reward. Um, this is how I coach my clients. You know, a lot of times um, we are taught, and I say we are taught loosely uh, from everything we see on social media, that um, if we cut X, Y, and Z out, we can look like so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with cutting complete food groups out is one, it's not natural. And two, we are a very, um, or we can be a very abundant scarcity mindset species. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I feel like I'm not allowed to touch something, you know, or that's the, a problem. That's yeah, a problem then. Right? You'll you'll create you'll do more than you expected. So for example, I used to binge eat, you know, and I and I'm not saying that I've never in the past couple years haven't gone over, no. But I used to binge, my cycle was very much like a lot of my clients' cycles. Binge restrict. I'm gonna cram it all in yeah. one night, and mm -hmm. then I'm gonna and, I, and I'm I'm not even hungry. It's just the motion. It's just emotion. It's almost yeah. robotic. You know, it's like getting lost in the television, Netflix, and eat. Not Netflix and chill. It's Netflix and eat. Yeah. And then the next morning, I'm like, oh, I feel so bad about myself off that one night. So mm -hmm. now I'm gonna punish my body. I'm gonna punish myself. And I always say, like, you can't hate yourself skinny. You can't hate yourself. <laughs> right? Uh, that's um, pretty good. That's pretty good. 
can't. So to me, nutrition isn't just an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. it's how you're feeling, because quite honestly, no matter what kind of um, program you're following, you can't beat the system. One, your brain is extremely smart, as is your body. Um, and your body will tell you exactly what you need if you pay attention. Um, if you haven't eaten all day, you're not going to feel good. You're probably going to get a headache. If you haven't drink any water, that's a good example. If you haven't had any water all day or yeah. very mm -hmm. much water, like you're busy, you're going, 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 um, you'll get a headache. Your back will start to hurt. Your muscles will start to hurt. And you'll be thinking, wait, when did I work out? I worked out three days ago. Why am I sore? Right. Oh, I'm hydrated, you know? So to me, um, nutrition is inside out. It is a relationship with food ideally a balanced one and we are not perfect and that's okay um but it's not it shouldn't be a love hate relationship so really a lot of my coaching involves mindset you know okay. uh, you can have the cake it's not gonna kill you if i can if it. i can have the cake if i can have the cake and it's not gonna kill me then the next card here yellow card this this is uh these are two words that are on this card and i want you to tell me what this means to you mm -hmm. the the two words are crock pot ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right what what do, what do those two words mean to you so i um full disclosure i've been coaching for a while i've been in the health and fitness industry for I think over 15 years now, I'm telling my age, but, um, so you're 20, so you're 27. Okay, go ahead. I started when I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I love to eat and I love to eat balanced meals and I love coaching and everything. I don't love to cook. I don't, I've tried to love to cook. I've tried to make myself love to cook. I've tried to make it fun. I've played my nineties music. <laughs> I don't love to cook. Uh, okay, I got a daughter like that. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't like it. So what I do is, I every Thursday I take my meat that I'm gonna. I plan a crock pot meal for the weekend because half of the week I go through a meal prep company um, mm -hmm. to stay on track, and I don't like to cook. The other half of the week I do cook simple things like protein pancakes, simple lunches, uh, breakfast every morning. I do cook. It's real easy, but. Every Thursday, I have planned a crock pot meal for the weekend. So I pull mm -hmm. out meat um, to put in the fridge for 24 hours. And then the next morning, I prep it, put the crock pot on low for six to eight hours, mm -hmm. and it's cooking. And then I'm not thinking about it. It just smells good. And then it's done. Okay. Well, you, oh. have, expl you, have, you have explained the importance of a crock pot in your life. That card is gone. You already talked about nutrition. That card is gone. <laughs> So now I have to ask you this. If you if you could please explain to the audience what these two words mean to you. North Carolina. My first home. It's my my first home and it's where uh, my whole pretty much not everybody but pretty much my whole family resides. Even though I've been for the past, gosh, it's already been almost seven years of living out here. I've been trying to get them to come out here, you know, like, oh, like, yeah, you know, right. Hasn't happened yet. They have I was going to say, it's, it's, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's where, you know, to me, it's my first home. It'll always be my first home. It is where I got sober. It's where I grew up. You know? When it, when it when it comes to when it comes to your life that was really good north carolina when it comes to your life the next card comes into play what does it mean to you when you hear the word sober free it means free i um i'm not one of those you know because i got sober i don't demonize alcohol um, because I think just like anything, some people have healthy relationships with it. Some people don't, um, I'm the latter. I don't, um, I try to have a healthy relationship with it, but it did not agree by the contract. <laughs> I couldn't or what formula I tried. Um, but 
So yeah. you're saying you're saying that alcohol didn't cooperate with the terms of the agreement? No, me and Kat okay. got in a couple fights. Okay. I, no, I alcoholism runs in my family, you know, and not everyone in my family is an alcoholic, but I am an alcoholic. Um, and for you know, in the beginning of my drinking and using, I did use drugs. Um, mm -hmm. It was fun. If I were to be like, oh, it was terrible from the get go, that that would be a lie. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it was fun, you know, and it was fun, but I still did a lot of stupid things and said a lot of stupid things and I had consequences right away. Then it was just consequences. And then it ended up with me being super depressed and reliant on it. So mm -hmm. I was my life around alcohol. Like I couldn't go to a concert unless I was pre-gaming. I couldn't um, go to a friend's get together unless I knew there was gonna be alcohol. I couldn't go out drinking for the night unless I had gone by the liquor store to ensure that there was alcohol at the apartment. So that when two o'clock rolled around, I wasn't left with like, there's no more. So my whole life, right, right. you know, revolved. Yeah. Mm -hmm around alcohol and you know i was also starting to work out at that time um towards the end of my drinking and i was like wanting to do all these things like move to california and go back to school and mm. you know alcohol was like not letting me do those things um, <laughs> i wasn't waking up feeling well i was shaking and you know being young and shaking i was like oh it's probably just nerves no it was dts it was delirium tremens wow. mm -hmm. so I felt chained to it because I tried to quit um, no less than a dozen times. I even took, I even took a "Are you an alcoholic?" test online. I lied on two of the questions, and I was still discovered as being an alcoholic. Who the hell does that? <laughs> okay, oh no, no, you got We got to repeat that. I'm sorry. You lied on the test. Yeah. And it still told you you were alcoholic. Yeah, I lied on the test that no one was watching me take for myself. I was in wow. denial. I fired a therapist that told me I went into, a th I went to talk to a therapist to treat me for my depression, but he asked me about my lifestyle and then he kept talking about my drinking and I was like, oh no, 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 I'm depressed. Like we need to fix the depression. And he's like, do you think that your depression has anything to do with your, your drinking? And I'm like, what? No, you know? So I was in such denial that I did everything I could to paint the storyline that ends in was an alcoholic possibly back then could know, knows how to drink well now and can drink normal and lives the happily ever after life. Right. But right. that wasn't the case. So, um, did you, did you, did you find yourself with friends that thought just like you about alcohol? Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't hang out with, I, I did, um, I had a few friends that aren't alcoholic that could drink. They went through a phase that could literally drink and, and keep up with me. And, and now they're like normal. Um, but they can also like drink and stop. I, for me, it's, I couldn't drink and stop. I, right. I would plan on having like two and then I would end up having 10. You know, mm -hmm. I tell my friends to hide the liquor you know, just pour me a shot and hide the bottle and then I would find it, you know, that kind of thing. So I tried um, switching types of liquor. I was like, mm -hmm. well, I'm, you know, normal drinkers on commercials drink wine. So I'm going to drink wine and I would get drunk. Um, then I was like, I'll drink beer and then drunk whiskey, drunk, you know, and so yeah, right. that just continued. And then um, it continued and continued and continued and it ended me with me on um, getting in fights. I was little, I am, you know, um, making a fool of myself, losing friends, um, being put in, not being put, but yeah, being put and putting myself in really precarious, to say yeah. dangerous situations, dangerous. Mm -hmm. wow. um, like going to New York and being so drunk, getting lost in Queens, not wow. one taking wow. your off because your feet hurt in Queens with like in the middle of the night, there's glass on the, you know, it's yeah, like right. city there's yeah. But, 
um, yeah, it just continued until I had had enough and I had realized, wow, it's not even fun anymore. And I just, um, it's not even working. Why, 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 why do you think, why do you think it's important for others to hear what, what you've gone through? Why would you say it's important for you to share what you're sharing right now? Um, so the people know they're not alone, they know they're not alone. And also, you know, one thing that was very much shown to me is that you can be happy and be sober. The funny thing is, I was like, I want to stop drinking. This is not, this can't be my life anymore. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I was like, but what if I get, what if I never have fun again? And you know, one of my, um, I'll call her my sober mentors. One of the first sober mentors I met, she was like, okay, but let's back up. Describe fun to me. I'm like, well, you know, like those <laughs> where the person's laying on the beach and they have the fruity drink or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brown is a beer, but whatever, a tropical drink with the little mm -hmm. umbrella. Yeah. And a little umbrella in it and they're just relaxed. No one's getting arrested. No one's getting fight. No one's fighting. No one's throwing chairs at each other in a bar like I did, right. or yelling or making a fool of themselves or whatever. Everyone's relaxing. They're on vacation. They look put together and composed. I was like, that's fun. And you know, she she was like, have you ever done that your entire life? Like, have you ever? You've been to a beach a lot. I was like, yeah. Right. Have you ever had one drink? with the little umbrella, with your hair, everything looks normal, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. not yelling, not talking like little, you know, not talking ridiculous, um, eyes crossed, not being able to see, falling into buildings and stuff. Have you ever done that? And I was like, no. She's like, so it doesn't look like you're probably, even if you were to start drinking again, the chances of you drinking responsibly. Into that, into that future yeah. on the beach. Where everything's perfect is yeah. your yeah it's not gonna not gonna happen no not for me like again I, i'm not gonna demonize <laughs> drink i'm socially and i'm not one of those people yeah. um, so you know my other concern was you know like i said will i ever have fun again and she's like just hang on you haven't even had fun like you thought you had fun in the very beginning but like you don't remember any of it so you'll actually be able to remember the fun that you have now. And she, I, I even, I'll say I underestimated her big time in her promise okay. because to say that it has been fun, it would be an under, yeah, I'm underestimating myself here because it's been a blast. Yeah. Like, you, hard, but it's okay. Been so, so you've been, let's talk about a touch. We're going to touch on the blast part. Okay. You have since moved to California pretty much from when you were dealing with the sobriety or becoming sober. You yeah. have, you're, you're now out here. You're doing a number of different things. Let me ask you this then. When it comes to your body and fitness and your mindset toward nutrition, have you ever entered a competition for fitness? <laughs> I have. Did you do? Did you did you enter that competition being drunk? No. Mm -mm. Tell us about it. I um I did okay so I did do uh, a fashion show drunk. I couldn't okay. get on stage. Um, I couldn't do anything when I was drinking unless I was drinking. That's the irony, and I thought that if I drank, I would do it better. No. You would do it better. No. No. No, well, you know, yeah, a lot of people think, well, if I just stay high, I'm going to play this song really good. And in actuality, well, many are famous. Many have made records that way. But the reality of it is the trueness of who they are never really came out. Right. Only, the, only their dark side yes. and, and dep depressed side came out. So, so you entered competitions at some point or a competition. How many have you ever been in? So I um, entered my first fitness competition um, a few years ago. Um, I was sober. I moved to California when I was about two years sober, um, because I had that finally had the opportunity, which is good. It didn't happen like right away. Cause I think that would have been too much, but 
I'm actually prepping for my next competition right now. That's going to be in okay. weeks. So. And how many? How many weeks again? Ten. It's coming up. Ten weeks. Okay, so you, um, that it's a good thing you're sober. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, yeah. Now you you no doubt have a coach that helps you with that, but you also are a health coach. But yeah. you also have a coach for yeah. what you're trying to achieve, right? So sometimes we may need some coaching when we're trying to achieve what we need to coach others on. <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, I could write my own training programs, but I don't specialize in competition prep coaching um, for one. And so for you're, you're, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. For two, um, I like having a coach. I like having, okay. you know, I, I like having somebody else, um, hold me accountable and she's amazing. Her name's Melissa Lehman. Um, if anyone's looking for a competition prep coach, but, <laughs> okay. um, and I've been with her for over a year now. So, so yeah. she, she has you in prep mode right now, prepping, prepping for competition, yes. which means that she has an impact and influence on the way you're putting food and what foods into your body, getting you ready for your goal. And you are in love with the other Melissa, not that you have a split personality, but the <laughs> other Melissa, because the two Melissas work well together. What is there about you when it comes to, this card says, fitness that makes you the right health coach for certain people? What is it about you that will make you the right person for them? Because I don't believe in uh, quick fixes. I don't believe in shortcuts. I believe, um, you know, wellness, health, wellness is uh, all encompassing. It's mind, body, and soul, and that's the way I coach. You know, so my my clients do breath work. We do goal setting. We do um, intention setting. We do. I do life coaching with them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, customized, of course, customized training program and customized nutrition programming to help them reach their goals. But the biggest thing for me is mindset. And the thing is, like, a lot of people say this, you know, your results are 90% nutrition. When it comes to aesthetics, when it comes to aesthetics, how you look, right? Um, mm -hmm. I would just argue that it's, think of it like a pyramid. And at the base of the pyramid is your mindset. Okay. And then it's nutrition, then it's everything else. Nutrition, then fitness, and stress, then sleep, right? Um, or sleep, then stress. Um, because when you're lacking sleep, when you're stressed out, your brain is literally releasing hormones telling you, hey, we got to run, or we got to eat, or, you know, mm -hmm. we're more likely to binge when we're stressed. We're more likely to binge when we're tired, because that's when your hunger hormones are being released. Um, so we go over it all, but I don't like coaching and being like, okay, here's, here's a cookie cutter program. Now you're going to get whatever you're looking for. You know, right, right. hope is that I am able to coach my clients in a way that it is lifelong, you know, right. they can stay right. with me for a while and then they could spread their wings and fly mm -hmm. what they learned and applying it to their life, you know, and, and not, losing 15 pounds, gaining 20, feeling stressed out, um, but losing the weight that they want and also gaining more confidence, uh, gaining more courage, you know, uh, because the reason why I started coaching in the first place was because of my own, my own fall my, flat on my face, scuff everything up. How do I dig my way out of this? Right. And to help others do the same thing i want to light. i want to light the path for them and they have to do the work but i want to light the path so when it when it comes to you prepping now for your competition fitness competition um what are some of the things that you're doing now for pre prepping for a fitness competition that you can kind of relate to mental health or just emotional well-being what are some things that are kind of analogies that can compare between the two that may be similar? Well, a couple different things. Um, you gotta, you gotta look at your why. And here's the thing. When I did my first fitness competition, mentally, I wasn't in the right mindset, I believe. 
um, to do the competition. I don't regret it. I had a blast. It was great. It was fun. I made new friends. I actually did pretty good. Um, Whoa. Once on stage, and I still laughed about it. Um, but I was, uh, with, with competitions, you know, it's easy to compare. And if you're struggling with self-esteem, doing a fitness competition is not going to help you with that on any mm -hmm. level. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like you have to be strong going into it. Um, otherwise, it's not going to, it might even make it worse for you. Mm -hmm. you know? Because the physique that you're bringing to the stage isn't going to be the physique you, you wind up with not even two weeks later. It's not, it's not, it's not healthy. It's not obtainable or not right. sustainable, I should say. Um, but as far as prepping for it goes, it's like anything else. Having the right mindset is the most important thing, I think. And then um, having a plan, um, really having a plan. You know, I'm a big proponent, and not because I am a coach, but, you know, asking for help, investing in yourself to get help, too. You know, mm -hmm. um, the investing that I've done in the past two years alone, it's been pretty high. <laughs> But it's been probably my biggest growth years of my life, you know? Yeah. It's, no, not probably, definitely. And I'm including when I got sober too. The last two years have been the mm -hmm. biggest growth years of my entire life. And it's been, thank you know, because of a good support network, but also because I invested in myself. Yeah. And I had support and I had a plan. When you have support and you have a plan of action and you start doing things one step at a time, Mm-hmm. You fly. Yeah. yeah. You you you've been you've been flying for quite a while, no doubt, since uh your your beginning of your sobriety. Uh but no matter how much you fly, no matter what you're doing, um you you you're still not in the sports, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I told you, I went through your videos. I, I've got tons of stuff. I got stuff that I can pull out, you have no idea. And you'll be laughing. You'll be laughing the whole show just like that. How did he know that? I told you. I do my research. I do my research on everybody that comes on here to to ask them questions. Are you telling me that you're from North Carolina, the home of Michael Jordan, yes. the home of NASCAR? Yes. And I could keep going. There's other things in North Carolina. A lot of people may not know. Yes. But but football. Well, Carolina Panthers. We can keep, we just keep going. Now you will watch football. Is that is that what you're saying? I will watch, I will, I don't watch college football. I'm not against it. <laughs> you better be, you better be careful what you say. No, I don't want to lose people here. Obviously. Yes, you will. In North Carolina, you will. No, so I, no, no, no. I do like football. I actually really like football. There's a couple of sports that I don't jive with. Hopefully people won't get like, oh my gosh, over this, but i um, not really big. So Charlotte is big for golf, you know, big. Yes, that is, that's true. Yes, that's true. So when I used to work in the hotel industry years ago, um, the golfers for the championships, they would come, they would fly in um, and they would stay at the hotel that I used to work at. And um, it was cool to meet everybody, but I wasn't, I've never been into golf. Probably, and this is going to be so silly, but probably because you're told you have to be quiet. And I don't like quiet. Uh, Go to a sporting event, I want to yell. Okay. I want to. You know, um, so football, yes. Basketball in person, absolutely. Um, yes. Golf, no. Um, hockey's fun in person. But my the thing that maybe some of my uh, friends don't know about me is I used to be involved in the fights. Um, I did. I was never a fighter. Let me correct what I just. So, so you you started fights when you were drunk or whatever, but you never finished them. Is that pretty much the way that works? Tears and ran. I just did a hit and run. You started. You did a hit and run. You you one of the, you were one of those drunk. You one of those drunks that started something and then started and got behind got behind other people. You know what it was is um and it was always with Matt. Like okay, so what it, what that was is people. People, when they're drinking, we can be loud, blah, blah, blah. Um, someone would say something about one of my friends or something, and then I would come to the rescue by fighting, which was not, it's not smart. And I, but I at least knew somewhat that okay. I'm not really six feet tall, 300 pounds. I can't really do the damage. So I know I'm still a little, a little person. So 
but is that person at a distance and I'm not promoting violence, by the way, I would take a chair and throw it and then run out of the building. So let me, let me, let me understand this correctly. In your younger, in your younger years, before you came to your complete senses now, you like to throw things. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to ask that question because you mentioned it, you mentioned it numerous times about your ability, but yet, but yet you're not really into baseball, right? Oh, okay. So here's the thing. Um, well, a couple of, um, <laughs> when I was little, my dad knew sports and I hated it. He, he put me in, um, uh, softball and I was by far hands down, no questions asked the worst player on the team. My coach would always tell me, listen, I don't care who is pitching. We're going to pray that you get walked. Don't swing. Don't and swing. Don't swing. Get walked and then run like the wind when, you know, you can, when you're running. Yeah. And then run, take it home. She's like, do not, because she tried to teach me how to swing and I was chopping it. They called me chopstick. I was, you You'd know? be chopping at it, right? Yeah. You're, so you were getting ready to do nutrition back then and, and work in the kitchen, <laughs> but not, but not cook. softball for a while absolutely hated it wasn't good at swinging what could run, could run like the wind i could not catch i was scared of catching because i'd see the ball coming and i would get scared um music was my thing back then you know so i was never people there are people in my family that can play sports really well my sister was amazing at softball um not me my brother was pretty good um, so music wait music was your thing so so uh uh, right now, off the top of your head, um, back then, when you were younger, name one group that you uh, really liked their music. I liked oldies when I was really young. Okay, so name name anybody. The name some boys. The Temptations. The, okay, now now today, may of course you may still like those. Who do you like today? Get, if I was going to add a song to my playlist and you were going to give me a, a a group or or a song, what would it be? I know you may have many. Just pick one. Um, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm working out Eminem, or uh, <laughs> I would say if I'm working out Nicki Minaj, but that's not true because I will be driving around in my car with my windows rolled down, jamming out to Nicki Minaj. It just depends. It, it goes from rap Eminem. to still to oldies to nineties. I still like okay. a lot. So, so, so Eminem does not surprise me because I think he liked throwing things too. But what I was gonna say, <laughs> what I was, that explains a lot. Okay, okay. So I gotta, I gotta. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up. I literally could could do more than one segment with you, but I'm not gonna do that for for one main reason is because uh, you are um, going to say yes to come back, but we're gonna do it again on a narc abuse TV page another time, preferably after you come back uh, from vacationing and traveling and and other things. So I am going to do something again. I started off the show saying that to you before, something I haven't done yet with others, and I just did it. A basket of questions with just words on them, and you just talk. You just talk like you've been doing. Yeah. Now, I did, I did that because I want people to get to know you because you will be a part of my podcast as it goes on. Uh, my daughters and I put this together, uh, this channel, as well as our other Narc Abuse TV network page. and. Um, I want you to be a part of this uh, this family for the rest of your life, as long as you are willing to come back. Uh, but but yeah, I know you're going to get famous one day, and we're going to be this little still podcast running out of the basement here in Southern California. But uh, you will hopefully remember us as the place where you came to be by the beach and the mountains and so forth. But I'm going to do something now I have never done before, and this is laid out in front of me. You can't see it, but this is going to be – a segment. You're the first one ever. I'm just introducing this segment today. It, this segment is called Rapid Fire. Is what I'm. I already did the basket. We already did that. Okay. Uh, you you answered a lot of those uh, sports, fitness, all these things that I wrote on there. Okay, you did those. But I have more in front of me. We're gonna. We're we've talked 39 minutes, or really you've talked uh, uh, 30, and I've talked nine. But you, we've gone 39 minutes, and I love it. I love it. I love it. And uh, I know. Uh, everyone loves to watch these things back or listen to them while they're going on, while they're exercising or whatever. So I hope everybody loves this. First time ever, 
called Rapid Fire. Here we go. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine, ten cards in front of me. We're going to see how far we can go here. Rapid Fire. Here we go. I'm just going to say stuff to you. Go as quickly as you can. And here we go. I want your personal feelings and thoughts on words and statements you've already said on your page. Okay. First one, self-hate, self-hating, self-hate, self-hating. Your self thoughts real quick. Self-hatred was something that was um, put on us at some point in our lives that we have to work on rewiring our own brain to heal from so that we break the cycle because hurt people hurt people. Healed people can help. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, okay, that was awesome. That was cool. Okay, here we go. I had to throw that away there. Okay, so here we go. Next one. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, wait, I lost you. Can everybody hear me? Did we? Did I lose everybody again here, please? No, nope. you there? Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. Uh, somebody type out to me. Can you still hear me? Can you hear me? We can't hear each other. Okay, all right. So this is unbelievable. I can't believe this just happened. We were doing so good. Uh, I don't know why you can't hear me. Uh, nothing you got nothing unbelievable oh wait you can uh, so leave no contact who can you hear me or my guest who can you hear i don't know what just happened there so who uh uh so leave no contact who can you hear can you hear me uh melissa you can't hear me huh melissa melissa can hear nothing unbelievable all right. Oh, they can hear me. You can hear Paxton. You can hear Paxton, not my guest. So they can't hear you for some reason. Yes. Yes. Are it, are you on are you on Bluetooth? She can't hear me. Unbelievable. We were going so good. Uh okay. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload this show. We're going to come back in just a moment. Okay, everybody, we'll be right back.